be making blooming potatoes. So, let's get to it. How was your week? Oh, that sounds fantastic. My week, my week was, okay, update on the thumb. Can finally make it upright. So, thumbs up. Today's recipe will require thumbs. I got russet potatoes. Russet potatoes are the best potatoes for frying. Okay, so you better get russet or else I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna give you a free lifetime supply of russet potatoes. So either way, you should get russet potatoes. In order to make these blooming potatoes, you will need to karate chop this in half and I already did that so or you can just use two if you're like lazy you can just use two really long ones you're gonna have to wash your potato first okay one patat two patat also this is very similar to the accordion potato video I made a few months ago keep peeling very fun you know this is the most fun part of this recipe is just standing here and peeling a bunch of potatoes. All right, now we shall change spots. Sit comfortably because this might take a while. Okay, so first off, you have to make sure you have a super sharp knife, which I do. And we're gonna cut this in half, okay? We're gonna take one half of it and we're going to cut the end off. Now for the potato scraps, you can make mashed potatoes with it or hash browns or just eat it raw if you are adventurous, okay? We're going to cut the edges, try to make it straight. And we're gonna make a cube slash rectangle. Like so, look at that, beautiful. Okay, we're gonna chop this chubby one in half. If you want a perfect square potato, then find a chubby round potato. If you want a rectangular, then find a long thin one. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It all tastes the same, right? <laughs> this is the potato scrap box, AKA Kanji Queen, the best Chinese takeout place in Toronto. Okay, put our scraps away, you know. Make a nice potato salad on a nice, hot, refreshing summer day. Now, the main event, grab your two skewers. Also, if you don't have skewers, which um, I'm judging you because kebabs are great, so. But if you don't have skewers, you can use chopsticks, I guess. But chopsticks are much, uh, not very consistent in shape. As you can see, the bottom is bigger, the top is thin. So use to your discretion. Now we're going to cut it pretty thinly. The last piece is always hardest. I recommend sandwiching your fingers between the left and right potato and cutting the last strip like that. Now with this book, we're going to rotate it. We're gonna cut it vertically. Now this might be harder because it's wiggly now since we made little cuts in it, it'll be much more wiggly. So you have to secure it with your hands, okay? And you're gonna cut vertically all the way down to the skewer. Now we got the blossoms, the petals, the potato petals. Look at that, beautiful. It's like a pixel. I'm done chopping my other potatoes. Add a little salt, place the potatoes into the salt bath. And we're gonna let it rest for 20 minutes. Look at my beautiful fridge. That's me three times, one, two, three. Also, as I was preparing to film, I realized that one of my 
nose pads for my glasses fell. And I don't know where it went. Is this focusing? I can't even tell because I don't have my glasses on. So like this is here. I don't know where my other nose pad went, but still works. We're just gonna put some cornstarch in this bowl. Takes a true chef to know how to put cornstarch in a bowl. All right, so the potatoes are done soaking. All right, so we're gonna grab our potato, mix it around in the cornstarch, right? And we're just gonna incorporate the cornstarch into the potato. Try to fan it out. You might break a couple pieces like I did here, but that's fine. It won't be perfect. So what I'm doing to loosen up the strands is I'm using the skewer and I'm just poking through it to try to loosen it. These are what I have. We got our hot oil on like seven. Try to open it as much as possible and loosen up the strands because once you fry it, it's just gonna harden up. And we're gonna let it cook for around five minutes or until it is nice and golden crispy brown. Also, if you haven't noticed, this is a Dutch oven. Perfect for frying a bunch of stuff at once. I didn't have one before, so now that we have one, it's so much better. All right, so as you can see, now it's nice and crispy golden, so we're gonna remove it and place it onto a cooling rack. Look how gorgeous. All right, let's make a quick sauce. Okay, a chop. Mayo. And you know what? We're feeling a little spicy today. We'll put some garlic powder, okay? Oh, you thought that there wouldn't be a voiceover, but there is one. Uh, I'm just mixing up some ketchup and mayo and garlic powder. And why am I talking like this? Okay, the, I think it's time. the time is up. Now, let's head to the taste test. Wow. All right, so this is the finished product. And let's begin the taste test. Got my little saucy sauce right here. Let's try it without the sauce first. Let's take this one. Look how gorgeous, beautiful, crisp. First bites for you, mm, yum, yum, yum. Cheers. texture so much more interesting than a regular french fry. All right, we're gonna try this one with the dip. Dip, oh yeah. Cheers. Mmm, nom nom nom. Mmm. Mmm. The dip makes it 10 times much more flavorful and delicious. Obviously, because I put ketchup, mayo, and garlic powder. But on its own, it's pretty good. Like, this way of cutting it definitely gives a very unique texture. So the accordion potato I made a few months ago is much crispier, but this has more potato flavor in that it has a nice crunch on the outside, but the inside is nice and fluffy, whereas the accordion potato that I made is mostly just a potato chip. So this is much more similar to a french fry. Mm. The cornstarch just makes the french fries more crispy. If you didn't use cornstarch, you'll probably have to fry it twice, which is fine. And the cornstarch helps it stay crispy, and that's what we want with french fries, right? Okay, I'm gonna try one more. Let's try this very big blossom. <laughs> We're gonna top it off with sauce. How do we eat this? Maybe you can also eat it like a blooming onion, right? It can like take off each strand. Mm, very delicious. Okay, cheers. Mm. Make 
make this again. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post once a week and I'll see you guys